Now we're going to talk about the torso. And we're going to talk about the torso with a twist. But first, we've got to get the torso itself down. And then we'll deal with the twist. And I promise the head and the neck, we may have to save that for, ne for uh, next week. We'll try. Try and get it in. But I think we might do that to, to do it justice. Save that for next time. So the twist. Now, if we look at a tube, a tube is a wonderful thing. Because a tube gives us really great dimension. And when I draw things, I like to draw a bunch of lines. Uh, part of that's inspired by one of my favorite uh, draftsmen of all time. Probably my favorite, I'm not sure. Pontormo. He was a mannerist. Uh, uh, he came right after the High Renaissance, so uh, the time of Michelangelo. I loved his work. And he would draw a lot of lines. He would just search. He'd have that knee... And he would just search for where that knee was. And he wasn't afraid to chase after it several times. And I love that kind of searching idea. And so um, I adopted that. And I found later when I started to study how we learn, which I did for a last few years before I started the coaching program that I've got now <clears throat> and kind of reinvented the way I teach or taught. But that repetition, it creates immersion. It creates a flow state. It locks us into a rhythm, a ritual um, that uh, lets, it, lets us learn quicker, lets us move farther along our path lets us de-stress and have a little more joy and sometimes a lot more joy in the process. So it does a lot of wonderful things for us. And so what Pontormo was doing way back when uh, was a very smart idea in terms of leveling up as well as just beautiful work. So back to the tube. When we draw that tube, we get um, we get all of the information we need, except for one, which isn't very important. So when we're drawing anything, in this case, we're going to draw the torso, and we're going to think of it as a tube. What I want to do in my art as much as possible, and what I want to most impart to you folks as much as possible, is that if we can think of art as an idea, and a very specific, get very conscious about that idea, and figure out an idea that may not be scientifically true. The fact is a torso is not a tube. So scientists might scoff at that. God is not a rock. but So it's not necessarily a rational truth that's going to get proven out in the laboratory. But it's a useful truth. And as I get better and better at my truths, my ideas... Eventually, I want them to be powerfully emotional truths because that's where art, like spiritual practices, and you guys, if you know me at all, know what I think of the two, it, they're emotional truths, powerful emotional truths that allow us to connect to things. So I want an idea in my art that's useful. So instead of drawing the torso with all the muscles, all the forms, biggest part of the body, it articulates. We're going to talk a little bit about that if we have time. <clears throat> it does all these things. It can be overwhelming to draw and very intimidating to draw. So I want to reduce it down to an idea that is as simple as possible. And I've mentioned this several times, almost every uh, live stream I've done, but it's, it's critical. Simple and yet characteristic. I want it as simple as I possibly can make it. It's just a tube. And yet I want to make it a very characteristic tube. And as I move along and render and refine, I'm going to be refining my idea about the tube. And we'll see how that goes. So the tube is just a simple structure. And a structure is something I define, my idea of structure, 
is it's a three-dimensional form in a very particular position. If I can understand the character of its form, and hopefully it's a simple idea, just a tube, and its position in space. Well, we're a little bit on top of it, and we're a little bit, and it's leaning a little bit to the left at the top. And if we were to put a natural center line, and because the torso that we're going to draw is naturally symmetrical, we could just draw the breastbone down the belly button or draw the nipples. We'd know not only how it's tilting in and out of space, not only how it's leaning to the left or the right in the picture plane, but how it's facing. Those are the three dimensions that we talk about when we talk about form. I'm just going to check over and see how our chat's going here. Let me look for the... Okay, it looks like everybody can see and hear me. Good. Yay. So we're going to then spend most of the lesson trying to get, to get just the right tube. But it could be any idea. It could be several ideas. It could be a egg for the rib cage. And if we were going to add the neck, if we ever got there, it might be a Coke bottle kind of shape from neck into rib cage. So a very particular kind of tube or an egg with a, a uh, kind of nozzle end on it or a teardrop with the end of, the, of it cut off, whatever we wanted. And then we might have a, a spare tire for the waist and a tipped over pickle barrel for the hips and so on. Any idea is fine as long as it's simple enough that I don't feel overwhelmed, characteristic enough that very quickly we start to get the feeling of this being that, this form or series of forms being that particular body part in this case. Simply a characteristic. Now, once I have the tube, once I have the structure, which is going to be that tube in a very particular position, Then I want to bring life energy into it because one of the problems, the idea that we construct the body or any part of the world in simple yet characteristic shapes, a wonderful idea. It takes away a ton of the overwhelm. We don't have to learn all the muscles, connections, attachments and origins, the, the uh, Latin words for them and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> we can just draw simple shapes instead of this. So when we artists have an idea, we are drawing our idea instead of the real world. We're imposing our, our idea on the real world. I can impose it in such a way that all of the real world stuff right at sunset are beautifully harmoniously connected. We call that series of ideas that as an aesthetic basis, beautiful, a composition. And these wouldn't have to be our ideas about art or about the world. It could be something else, anything we want. So I'm going to draw the two, but if I'm going to make that structure come alive and not feel like a Frankenstein, a Frankenstein, notice the terminology for someone who's dead. They're a stiff. They get stiff, and that's Frankenstein, stiff. We don't want that stiff, and that's the big flaw in the, a constructionist style. If we're, we're so worried about the architecture that it feels like architecture, it feels like a a a Roman column, a standing stone, a stone hinge. It's stiff and lifeless. And yet anything that's alive is fluid. 
And so we're going to draw the structure with the gesture. Have those two ideas come together. And together that gives us a fuller sense of what we see in life. And that gesture can be simple yet characteristic. And if we look to the long axis, that's how we'll define that gesture. The long axis curve because the gesture is the energy that connects this to that. And notice how everything's connected on the human body, end to end to end. And so the long axis leads us down the fluid design of that one part and into the fluid design of the next part. The gesture is the long axis curve, a very simple yet characteristic idea. And when we put these two together, magic happens. So now I'm going to draw that tube. I'm going to work to get it in just the right position and just the right proportion, but we're not going to worry too much about either one. I worry about too many things at, at once. I get frustrated and then bad things happen. So I want to just make it a tube it's roughly in the right position, but if it's not leaning quite so much, if it's not quite deep perspective as I've drawn it, it's okay, just ballpark. We'll refine it later. <clears throat> and then I'm simply gonna take the long axis of this tube and curve it. So I'm gonna draw it again. And I'm gonna curve it. And now when I do that, it's going to start to come alive a little bit. And then I'll just keep drawing it over and over. I call it in my uh, coaching program, iterating, creative, strategic play. But for now, I just focus on play. And what I'll do is I'll keep drawing that tube until it's in more and more true position. And then I might, once I've got that tube idea down, more and more tubular. Well, that's not quite tubular. Keep practice until we get it nice and tubular. Three sketches, 33 sketches. Do it over several sketching sessions. Do it for the rest of your life to refine and make more, uh, more accurate that statement. Then I'll take the form, get it in the right position. And I'll take the form, get it in the right proportions and so on. We'll kind of shortcut that. But that's kind of the process that I want to go. And that's the process. One little idea, get control over it. I'm just going to sit on the bike. I'm not going to ride the bike. I'm going to put my feet on the pedals, but I'm not going to kick the kickstand out. I'm going to take one little baby step, one little tiny step that gives me a very good chance of feeling safe, a very good chance of succeeding. And I'm gonna do that repeatedly until I feel safe and confident and competent. And then I'll add the next step. Okay, now I'm going to take the kickstand off by put my feet back on the ground. I'm gonna practice on getting that bike. And now I'm gonna do that, take the kickstand off, bring it up, do that a few times. Now I'm gonna lift my legs and try and balance and put them down. And little step after little step, we'll just keep adding a new idea and playing with it until it feels more and more correct, until it rings true, until we feel competent in it. Then I move on to the next thing. So that's all we, we're, we, we need to do is we'll draw that tube in the right position, in the right proportion, in the right character of the right shape or structure. And then if I want to twist something, if I put a natural center line down that tube, and it could be down any structure, a ball or a box or something, but we're working with tubes. <clears throat> Notice that I can start understanding with some practice how things align. position and proportion them 
and get better and better. We'll do a little bit of that today. If I want to make it twist, all I'm going to do, I'm not going to draw the tube any differently. All I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the same spot down the breastbone, say. And then however close it is to the edge, I'm going to make it farther from the edge. farther from the edge. And when it twists, I'm going to think of rope or wringing out a wet towel. And if I were to twist this like rope, twist it like a barbershop pole, like the bundled strands, that rope, it would do that. So now we've got this here and the belly buttons over here. And you'll notice as soon as I do that, we kind of have a natural alarm bell going off, going off in our head. That's too far. The body feels like it's broken by twisting that far. And we'll naturally, uh, with little or no practice, realize, whoops, that's too big a twist. That might even be too big a twist. like so. And then we could add more and more stuff to it. And pretty quickly start to move it into something that's pretty characteristic of a, of a torso. So I'm going to try and find the simplest possible construction for each body part. I'm going to work on getting it down cleanly and simply characteristically in the right position, in the right proportion. And I'm not even going to worry too much about proportion. I'll show you why in a second. And then by laying in some landmarks, a natural center line, some kind of costuming or a corner where something changes direction, I can start to break it into pieces and move along. So let's see how that works. So what I usually do is I'll start the torso with a shoulder line. And then I'll draw the center line, the T of the torso. But I could start it with the far side. And since it's just a tube, I'm going to keep it parallel. Now, if I'm drawing a really muscular character, it's not going to be parallel. We're going to have the shoulders go wide and the contour go bumpy. Something like this. But we don't want to do that because if we draw that nice V shape of that heroic character, let's say, it's going to feel like a little flat and it's going to feel like a little frozen, like those 
arms can't really articulate, like it's a piece of wood or styrofoam on the back. And there's a good chance I'll make the shoulders too wide and the hips, the waist and hips too small. And then we end up with something like this. So I'm going to draw that tube. Here's my idea. <clears throat> waist wide. Waist wide. And then I'm going to treat the shoulders as an attachment to that. So don't let it drift out. Parallel. And then I'll build out, even if it's an Incredible Hulk, I'll build out those shoulders later. We'll deal with that another time. But I'll do that whether it's the front view or the back view. So let's look. And reference here. Oops. And with that. So I'm going to start with the shoulder line. I'm going to look at those shoulder lines as horizontal because that's what I'm used to. I'm going to see if they're not horizontal. We're not going to really do much with them, but it's going to be my starting point. Drops down a little bit to the right or to the left there. And then I'm going to look at my, my uh, center line, T of the torso. I'm going to go down the shoulder blades. I'm going to look to see if that's vertical. Almost. If I made it vertical, I'd probably be okay. But it's tilted a little bit. And then it goes over here. Now, if we do that, we'll probably get confused on a twist. If I can do that and assume it's wrong, it's okay. But... When I start doing that, then I, I start kind of doing this with the torso, and now it feels like it's paper in the wind. So that didn't help, did it? So instead, I'll just... just uh, start the the T of the torso at the shoulder blade, nothing more, because that's fixed. That, those shoulder blades are not twisting up there. It's just going to be there. It's everything below that that can twist. And what I'm going to look for is over here, I'm just going to draw a waist-wide tube. And let's say I think that's my waist-wide tube. And here, I can only guess. And then I'm going to give the tube form. I gave it shape, two dimension. I want to give it form. What well, goes into the skinny neck, it's pretty flat at the shoulder blades, and it tucks under at the waist, and then it cut, does it again. It goes flat in the waist, and then curves out at the hips. Going off this way somehow. I don't know how that's going to work. It's doing something like that. And if I kind of screw that up, it's okay. Didn't make it deep enough perspective. I made it too much perspective. Probably don't want to reverse the perspective. But if I just kind of pretended to reach out, could I touch his neck first or his shoulder blades first? Shoulder blades first. It's closer. So the neck must be farther, or for you, must be farther away. Just pick it up. And as I start getting, whoops. As I start getting more and more stuff in it, I might get a feeling that it's a little too fat. Let's just pretend it's not twisting at all, in fact. Maybe that's easier. Or it's a little too thin. So I'll just adjust. 
This is going to get covered anyway, so it's not a big deal if I screw it up. I just want to visualize the whole thing. Notice not vertical. Here we're not sure, but waste white tube not vertical. Now I've got a tube. Now I can start working with it. And as I come over here, it's moving this way, pushing just a little closer. To this side, I always screw up by making it too much. If the shoulders are dropping down on the left, I'd rather they drop too much. If the shadow is a dark thing, I'd rather it be too dark. So I'd rather have a little too much twist. And notice that the barbershop pole or the rope didn't matter or the bent rope didn't matter to the twist. It was still a tube, still parallel all the way down, still stiff and straight because it was stiff and straight, or curved because it was curved. The twist did its own thing within that. So I don't have to have this track. In fact, I don't want it to track. It's going to go its own way. And I'll just keep paying attention. Well, that's a little too far. I'll back off. This should actually come over here. I'll correct. And see how I'm slowly figuring it out. And the best thing to do is not to do what I just did, arrest, erase and correct, but do it again. Iterate. Creative play. Try it again. Make it a little better too. Make it a little better twisting center line, and so on. And then we just move on through on that. And when I look down here, it's going away. And when I look in here, it's flatter. And then when I look down in here, it's pulling up. And I said, I don't worry too much about proportions because I never commit down here until I'm ready. So that's my best guess. And then I'll just add stuff to it. Well, shoulder builds out. I still think it's too fat. I'll trim it away. I'll let that be the shoulder blade. And here's the, the waist. Still don't know where that changes direction yet. And I'll just keep adding stuff to it. Who's coming towards me? Let's do this. this in here. It's just extra stuff. And I'll just keep easing into it, easing into it all the way through. And once we get a little bit of practice, well, more than a little bit of practice, but we can then just, once I get the big stuff, I can go right on in and add the little stuff without trying to make it really structural. I get a good big structure for the rib cage, even if it's not quite right. And then when I add the shoulder stuff on, that can be pretty flat. This is in the way. And just keep working and working. And I can always change my mind. 
you know? I think this should be over here. Because it is, because it would be cooler, more beautiful, whatever. I think this is in here, down a little lower. How are we doing on time? Oh, done. This, the hips come back up this way. Now I've got a better understanding. This comes this way, so we'll dust that back a little bit. Dust that back a little bit. And I just keep adjusting, and I only go down as far and commit as far as I'm comfortable. And then I move along to the next thing, the next thing. And what I'll, uh, just to kind of take this farther, oops. I can build the whole bit here. You can see with a little bit of practice, I could just draw this stuff onto that solid tube with a little twist that I started right before. And this stuff is really kind of just designing and it looks pretty good. And we can add in other design stuff. And there's tricks to this, of course, to make it look even better and to feel more solid and be more sure of yourself. But what I really want is just a good foundation. And then I can always change my mind. You know, the hips. I want this up even higher. Want that over a little bit more. I want this to pull a little more narrowly. And I can just adjust it. And then what I'll usually do, I hinted at it before, but um, I will, it's my kitty, saying hi. I'll draw a tipped over tube, and sometimes I'll make it a bit of a pickle barrel bulging here so it uh, bulges up into the small of the back and tucks under for the gluteal area. And as I notice, as I add stuff in, I get more and more information that I could correct. Oops, this goes down here. And just keep plugging away then. So there's more to it, obviously. I shortcutted a lot of information. But what I want you to start looking for what I want you to start looking for is I 
holes, just a tube, and just a bent tube, and just a tube that's parallel, and then give it a center line. and then start finding landmarks. And if you've never worked with the figure, just look for different kinds of tubes and look for, lay that rope down. And if you really wanna work with a figure, but it's intimidating, then draw the tube here, waist wide. See how that makes it easier? And then the hips almost always, oops, I gotta put that on and then get YouTubed. There we go. The hips are usually going to be a little fatter, but if they're radically articulating like they are now, I don't like to draw it all in one tube. <clears throat> if it's a quiet or simpler pose, I'll draw it in all, all in one tube. But let's take a look at, let's see here, not sure what layer I was on. Probably on that one, I guess. No. Nope. I can't do that. Hmm. Yeah, it's not working. Okay, I can't erase it. But anyway, you can start with just a, just, I'll do it right here. Just a waist wide tube. Take your best guess at what it's doing. And just practice that. and then do it again. Usually the outside, the simplified outside of the tube will be, let us let that be like this, will be simpler than the curvy spine inside. It'll do whatever it's doing there and be a little more fluid because it's rising over the big rib cage, going to the skinny waist, rising over the big hips. And then you can just swing this down and then just guess. Just start to look. Check your own self in the mirror and just get a feel for it and be non-committal at the end. We'll trim that off. Okay, so let's stop there. We'll come back next time and take that idea of torso a little bit farther. We'll look at a front view see a little bit cleaner and then we'll try and attach the head and the neck to it.